The past month of fishing down here in South Florida has been some of the best fishing I've ever seen in my entire life, and that's all thanks to the Malt Run migration. What is going on guys, Ryan from Living Salty here and welcome back to another Work Smarter Not Harder episode. And today we are going to be talking about the annual mullet run migration. So let's start by talking about what mullet actually are. And no, I'm not referring to the 80s haircut that has been brought back now, but probably should have stayed in the 80s where it belonged. We're talking about the bait fish. Mullet are in the family of ray finned fish and they are found worldwide in tropical waters and even some species actually in freshwater as well. Now, most people use these mullet as bait, but fun fact, these mullet have been used for food in Mediterranean Europe since Roman times. So basically, while spectators were watching gladiators fighting for their lives in the Roman Colosseum, they might have been enjoying a mullet on a stick. So you might be asking yourself, what is the mullet run exactly? And that's a great question. The mullet run is an annual migration of these bait fish from all the way up in the Carolinas and Georgias, and they migrate all the way down to the Florida Keys. They travel all the way down here in very large schools until they reach Southern Florida. And then once they reach here, they will head offshore and that's where they will spawn. So the whole point of the migration is to move down here and to go offshore and to spawn. You might have heard the term finger mullet before, and this is referring to their size, and it's quite literal. These mullet that come through the migration are about the size of your finger and are absolutely perfect to use for bait. Now for the people watching in Florida, when can you expect the mullet run to make its way to you? Which is a great question and honestly completely depends on where you live in Florida. Now the migration typically begins in August and lasts all the way until November. But down here in like West Palm Beach in Southern Florida, the middle of September through October is the prime time of the mullet run and where you're gonna have the best time to do some fishing. However, things like hurricanes can mess up the predictability of where the mullet are and where they are heading. Just like this year, we have Hurricane Ian hit the west coast of Florida and messed up where the mullet were going and where people would find them here on the east coast of Florida. All right, let's talk about how you can take advantage of this mullet run, and it's gonna be a lot of information, so pause the video, grab your pen and paper, your phone, your notes app, or something like that to write down a whole bunch of information. Or you can even save this video down below, that way you can always refer back to it. And if you guys are enjoying this video so far and not finding it helpful, please hit that like button and consider subscribing down below. All right, so taking advantage of the mullet run. First off, I'd like to say it is not too late to take advantage of the mullet run this year. That is right, very good news for you guys watching this video right as it comes out. I'm still seeing loads of mullet here in West Palm Beach all the way up to Fort Pierce, Florida. There are tons and tons of finger mullet everywhere and big fish still blowing up on these schools. So ideally, before the mullet run even starts, so maybe you could start planning ahead for next year, you wanna buy yourself a good casting net and you wanna perfect throwing that casting net. Now you're gonna be thanking yourself for perfecting your casting net skills before the mullet are swimming circles around you and you're trying to throw the net and you're missing and you're throwing bananas and not pancakes, all that kind of mess. You're gonna thank yourself when you're throwing perfect pancakes right on top of those mullet, making your life a lot easier and you can start fishing even sooner. Now personally, I have two casting nets. I have one that's six foot, the other one is about 12 to 14 foot. Now my smaller net, my six foot net, has larger mesh holes, which allow for the net to be able to sink a little bit quicker, but when trying to catch smaller baits like pilchards, they'll sometimes get stuck in the holes, leading for an entire mess, but it is perfect for catching finger mullet. Now when it comes to my 12 to 14 foot net, it has smaller mesh holes, so when you throw it, it's gonna sink a little bit slower, it's bigger, so it'll cover a bigger area. Still great for catching mullet, but I have an easier time right now throwing my six foot net and I can just catch loads of mullet with it. So that's one I prefer to use for the mullet run. Maybe when I get better at throwing my bigger net, I'll be using that more, but for now I'm gonna stick with the smaller one. But that bigger net with the smaller mesh holes is perfect for other times of the year when we're catching pilchards to go offshore fishing. All right, next up. This might not pertain to everybody, but I know definitely some of you guys out there have drones. Drones can be extremely useful and tactical when you are fishing the mullet run. If you have a drone, when you're ready to go fishing, just throw it in the car, you're definitely going to be using it. It's really helpful when you pull up to a beach, and instead of getting out of your car and you know walking down the beach, looking down, you know you can't see everything from you know uh, sea level, you take your drone, plop it up in the air, you can run it down a couple miles each way, and you can see 
everything on the coast and you'll be able to tell if there are mullet at the beach, pier, inlet, inshore, whatever you guys are doing, you'll be able to see the mullet from the drone, saving you the time and energy of getting out, walking around, observing and everything. It'll allow you to just be more efficient when you're fishing and just be able to tell if this spot's a good spot or if you just pack it up, head to the next spot. So if you do have a drone, I highly suggest bring that along when you go fishing. Okay, so I know we probably have a mix of, you know, experienced fishermen watching and some people probably who just learned what mullet are for the first time today. So I'm going to reiterate that when you are fishing with these live mullet, you're going to want to use a circle hook. You don't want to use a J hook because you're not going to be setting the hook with a live mullet. The fish are going to come, they're going to eat it, and the circle hook's going to set itself. It's going to peel out drag and you're just going to start reeling. There's no bass fishing, you know, set the hook. We're not doing any of that with this. Use a circle hook and it'll also be a lot less likely for the fish to swallow that hook. Now we're gonna talk about where you should be hooking the mullet because it is very important. There are three ways that I think are the most popular ways to hook on a live mullet. The first one is through the nose. Second is through the roof of the mouth. And then the last one is through the back of the fish. Now, no matter what anything you guys have ever heard about the correct way to hook on a live mullet, I can tell you there is no correct way. Those three ways are the best ways to do it, but here's a little story for you. Now, at the beginning of this mullet run, I was primarily hooking it through the top of the mouth, just because that's the way I found that the mullet gets off the least amount of times, and it just worked for me in the past. Well, I was fishing one day during the early mullet run this year, and I lost four fish in a row. Obviously, I was very annoyed, very frustrated, trying to figure out what's happening because they're only small little finger mullet. How could they not be getting to the hook? So instead, I tried hooking it through kind of its lower back in between its like middle back to its tail. I hooked it right through its back over there. And the next fish that hit that live mullet, I hooked up into and landed. Now that just goes to show there's no like exact way you have to hook your mullet on. I've hooked it through the mouth and caught plenty of fish doing it that way. But this particular day, I was not getting any of the fish hooking it through the top of the mouth. So I switched up, hook it through the tail, and then bang, hooked up on the next cast. So it's just switch things up, guys. If it's not working, switch it up. So what do you do if the mullet are out of your casting net range? This is a very good question and probably come up in a lot of scenarios for my land-based fishermen out there. So let's just give an example like you're beach fishing, right? You see the pod, it's like 25, 30 feet off the beach. Obviously you can't get a casting net out there. So what do you do in this scenario? Well, there's two different suggestions and I actually just recently learned about this. Now the first thing you can do is you can basically make a chicken rig but with treble hooks. So what I mean by this is you're gonna have your monofilament leader, at the bottom of it, you're going to have weight, and then you're gonna have maybe two or three hooks spaced out, treble hooks, sorry. You're gonna have two or three treble hooks spaced out on the leader, and you're gonna cast it out, and you're gonna reel it in, and when you feel that your treble hooks are making it through the middle of the school, you wanna just, you know, try to snag them. Basically, it's all you're trying to do is just trying to snag some mullet out of the school. Works really well when they're really thick like that right off um, out of your casting net range and you'll be able to snag them and you'll be able to hook them on live bait. Now, the best way to do this, you gotta have your bucket with your bubbler and everything like that, but chances are they might not live as long because of maybe where you snag them, it might not be a good spot. So you probably should have two rods with you, one that's ready with a hook, put on to put on the live mullet the other one ready with your snagging setup so you snag the mullet you put on a hook you fish and then you know you lose that mullet then you take your other rod snag another mullet that's the way that i would suggest doing it now the second option to get some live mullet when they're out of casting net range is to actually use something very similar and we used it up north actually. It's called a bunker snag. So it's basically just a ginormous treble hook. It's probably, depends on the size, but you know, it'll be like this wide basically. And it's a weighted treble hook. So you just attach it onto a clip and you toss it out and you just snag it. Just keep snagging it as you're reeling in and you're bound to snag a mullet doing that. It's a little bit cleaner of a setup, a little easy because just one treble hook instead of dealing with a couple and you don't have to make a whole rig. You just buy, it's called a bunker snag if you want to look it up online. And yeah, that'll work very well for trying to snag some mullet. All right, lastly, let's talk about the way that you're going to fish your mullet because this is very important. You do not want to take your mullet and just toss it out in the middle of the pod and just leave it there and hope for the best. You are quite literally fishing a one in a million chance of that of your mullet 
in that pod, standing out and then getting hit. So there are a couple tactics to make your mullet stand out and to increase the chances so it's not a one in a million chance of you getting hit by that big fish. Now, this is personally not something I do, but I'll share it with you guys anyway because I've seen people do it. People take scissors and they start cutting the fins of the mullet. They'll cut their, their tail fins, they'll cut the pectoral or something just to make them swim really irregularly and that will get the attention of the bigger fish because they will see a wounded fish and obviously that's a lot easier for them to prey upon. Personally, I don't do it. I don't know, it's just something I've never done. I don't, it's just not what I do. Now the way that I fish my mullet most of the time is that I just put them on a hook weightless you know, weightless hook, no weight or anything like that, just a mullet on a hook and I toss them out. And the way you wanna to toss them out is not in the middle of the pod, but you wanna to toss them out on the outskirts. So if you have the main pod right here, you want to be tossing your mullet on the outside of the pod, that way he stands out a little bit. You don't want it to be way as far away from it, because all the big fish are still gonna be pouncing on the mullet pod, but you wanna keep it just on the outskirts, so that way he looks like a little wounded mullet swimming by himself, and uh, that way you're most likely to get hooked up. Now the other way you wanna fish your mullet when you're just free lining them like that, is if you see this is the ginormous mullet pod, and on this side of the pod, you just saw a huge fish blow up, you wanna reel in your mullet, or if you have them out of the water, you wanna cast right on top of where that splash is. Even though that fish just pounced and ate some bait, there's a very good chance that there's either more fish coming behind them ready to eat as well, or that same fish is just gonna keep eating in that spot. So even though you just saw a splash right here, and you're like, oh man, I'm over here, that's no good. No, reel in your mullet very quickly, toss them out to this side where you just saw that big splash, and you have a very good chance of getting hooked up that way. Now, a lot of fishermen are also going to tell you to fish your live mullet with weights. Now, this is something I don't really do very often because I have caught catfish when I fished my live mullet on the bottom. Yes, is I have very bad luck when it comes to catfish. I'm the king of catching catfish. But I was so surprised when my live mullet got eaten by a catfish. So personally, I don't fish a lot of mullet underneath the pod like that, but here's the idea and it makes a lot of sense. Basically, when you fish your mullet with a weight, you're going to be getting your mullet, your live mullet, underneath the pod. So all the pod is sitting up here at the top of the water column. The fish are coming up, boom, eating that live mullet and everything like that. When you take your mullet and you put them on a weight, you're gonna drop them right into the middle of the pod. He's gonna be swimming up there by himself when all of his buddies are swimming on the top over here. And those big snook, and sometimes big tarpon too, they get lazy when they get that big. They don't wanna exert that much energy to go up there. They're like 30 pounds, you know? They don't wanna be doing some crazy stuff. So a lot of those snook are really lazy, just like striped bass for those up north fishermen. They will sit at the bottom of the pods, just like they did bunker pods up north. Very similar fish. And so they'll sit underneath and they'll see your little live mullet swimming underneath the pod. And they'll just, they'll think it's a wounded mullet. It's a very easy meal. So he'll pounce then. So my opinion, if you wanna to try to get some of those bigger snook, um, I think you have a better chance of going underneath the mullet pod and doing it. I know I'm gonna definitely give it a try here at the later parts of the mullet run, but it's a very good way to get on some very big fish. The mullet run is without a doubt one of the most exciting times to be a fisherman down here in South Florida. Now, if you don't live down here in South Florida, this is a great time of year to come on down here and charter a fishing trip. I've caught some of the biggest fish of my entire life during this annual migration, and it's something I look forward to every single year. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you have any questions at all, feel free to drop it down in the comments. I will get to all of your questions, and with the best of my ability, I will answer all of your questions. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys didn't make it this far in this video, and you guys did enjoy and find it helpful, it would mean a lot if you hit that like button and consider subscribing down below. It really helps me out a lot. We also got some more epic fishing adventures coming up really soon, and you guys are definitely not going to want to miss it. And if you guys did enjoy this video, you guys should definitely check out this video over here on the left side of the screen. It's gonna be another Work Smarter Not Harder video where we talk about rods because rods are extremely important when it comes to fishing the mall run. All right guys, until my next video, remember to keep living salty.